What is going on folks? Today I have a mistake video for you. I've got 13 mistakes that I see people making in the preparedness community from beginner to advanced, things that I have personally done, most of them anyway, that I have corrected over the years. Um, this is not meant to be a judgment of any kind. This is just something that I wanted to talk about and try to help folks that may be stuck making these mistakes right now. You might not even see these as mistakes and please put it in the comments whether you think they are or not and if you feel I missed any. Let's jump in. So I think the biggest mistake that anyone can make is not starting. Not starting to prepare, not starting to get into a mindset of self-reliance, right? And owning that responsibility. Each, each of us have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and our loved ones, right? Not to rely on others and just to be more independent in general. So I think the biggest mistake by far and the most dangerous one, uh, to do another video on dangerous mistakes, is not starting. Just get started. Mistake number two, taking on too much too fast. You know, there's so many topics to cover when it comes to preparedness. And I know myself, I have become overwhelmed multiple times where I have tried to do fire, water, food, shelter, all these things at once. I'm buying a ton of stuff off of Amazon, very gear focused, right? Because that's how I started. I think that's how a lot of people start foreshadowing. But something that would happen with me is I would burn out. I would get deadlocked. Um, you know, there's just information overload, right? There's a balance that's needed for most folks. There's some animals out there, I'm sure, that just, you know, drink from the fire hose. Don't turn it off ever. That's amazing. I've met a couple of you out there. What I would advise and recommend is you try every month of the year, you bounce to a new topic. So picking the highest priority things, right? In my opinion, that's shelter, that's water, that's food, that's fire, you know, and so on and so forth. I'll put the 12 to 13 topics down in the description too. So you focus on the knowledge, skills, and gear all within that month. That's just advice that I have, recommendation that's worked for me in the past. Maybe it'll work for you too. Mistake number three, I think most everybody makes this mistake, and for me, it's a mistake that you can make over and over and over again. It's gear over skills. It's so easy to just get that thing on Amazon that you saw in the description of, you know, your favorite YouTuber video, right? But gear will not keep you alive long term. I'm a firm believer in that. Gear will eventually fail. I did a video on it a week ago. I'll plug it. Um, it's just something you want to avoid and you want to snap yourself out of it if you get stuck in that mentality. It's all about skills. It starts with skills, right? And really knowledge. You're absorbing, you're learning through books, audiobooks, YouTube uh, channels, videos, etc. You're absorbing this knowledge, but that knowledge will soon, you know, drift out of your memories unless you have photographic memory. But you really need to form those into skills by practicing and training. Gear will eventually fail I'm not comfortable with that. I want to have those skills. You also need skills to use the gear, so take that into account too. Mistake number four. What is the first thing that comes into your mind when I ask what is the priority in survival? In most situations, I think most people, no matter the variables, are going to think, I need food. I need food. I need to put that food in my belly. You need shelter. And by shelter, it's warmth. It's the ability to keep warm, the ability to allow your body to not lose more heat than it can produce. And that's what keeps hypothermia at bay. So shelter is keeping the rain off you. It's keeping the heat in on your body. You know, there's a lot of things that go into it, but the most important thing is shelter by far. Then comes water, then comes food, then comes fire. Mistake number five, we kind of covered this because it's so important, not practicing. You're learning, you're sucking in knowledge, you are reading all these books, your memory really solidifies and starts to solidify when you actually practice something, right? You remember back in school when you would take notes as the professor was talking, the teacher, and just to take notes, you're not really engaged, you're not really in it, right? Well, if you didn't study for that test, you didn't go over these notes over and over and over again, or really be engaged, like, you know, it's fun for you, it's a passion, etc. Chances are, at least if you're like me, you would forget 
what the heck you wrote just yesterday in your notebook. So there's kind of this engagement that goes into it. There is repetition, right? The rereading of the knowledge that helps as well. But there's also the physical act of practicing these things, practicing these skills, how to start a fire, how to purify water, right? Using an earth filter, you know, sand, pebbles, grass, etc. If you really, really want to solidify the knowledge and the skills, you would teach that to somebody. And that really, I find that really solidifies and locks in long term whatever it is that you learned from knowledge, from papers on a page or, you know, words that you're hearing from an audiobook. You're practicing those, turning those into skills, and then you are teaching that to somebody. You're going to be much better off than most folks out there. Number six, not prepared to bug out, no evacuation plan. I would absolutely you know, have a bug in and a bug out plan. And the bug out plan is actually practicing that plan. It's not just saying, yeah, I'm gonna bail. You know, if things get really bad, I'm just gonna bail. And I'll go somewhere in that direction on a map. Um, I'm talking about having a second location, third, fourth location, you know, away from, you know, a dense population center, for example. And on the inverse of that, right? You're always and only planning on bugging out. Well, what if it was better to bug in? What if it was better to stay in your suburban home for whatever reason? My point is you just want to have a plan for both. I think most are going to say, I don't know, maybe it's divided 50-50. People that are just going to stay put, people that are going to head you know, into wherever, hopefully not the woods. Man, I got to stop giving all the mistakes away. Just have a plan for both. There's going to be situations that would make either the best choice. Mistake number seven, sharing what you have. There's really no situation that I would ever condone sharing all the details of what you have, where you have it, you know, down to how many days of food that you have, etc. I just don't think anybody wins outside of somebody that would plan on looting you by sharing that detail and that level of information. So I would always steer clear from sharing that. I think it's great to share, collaborate, learn from each other, right? But there is a certain point that, and a line that you just don't cross, my opinion. It's a serious operational security issue. You know, things might not be bad from day one, but day 10, day 30, day 90, things can change. Mistake number eight, not having enough diversity in food, the right amount of food, and the right types of food. So I will admit, it's extremely easy to just buy in bulk a ton of pinto beans, a ton of jasmine rice, and... You know, you've got 30 years if you throw it into Mylar bags, you know, throw it wherever and you're done. The positive with that is you have food. You are preparing for hard times, tough times, etc. Kudos to you. The bad part of that is, have you ever tried eating the same food every day, multiple times a day? It's called food fatigue and you're going to get pretty sick of that food pretty darn quick. It's a huge hit to morale and that is really number one when it comes to preparedness. A lot of uh, militaries and a lot of groups and people, individuals that have actually had to survive. Watch the show alone, for example. It's a mental game before it's anything physical. And that is one of those things that really hits the mental side of things. So I would absolutely recommend you get spices, you get things like soy sauce, honey. There's a ton of things that you can get to spice things up. And salt and pepper is going to go a long way if you were really in a bad spot, SHTF type scenario. You know, these emergency buckets with, if you read the fine print, 1,200 calories per person per day is almost at the point where you'd be starving. Doing labor outside in a garden, whatever, you know, you will need more calories than that. You will need twice as many calories as you think, right? Or as the 1200, so going up to 2400 to 3000 calories for somebody of my size with moderate activity, I'm gonna be eating a lot of calories. I think those buckets, and especially things like uh, freeze dried foods from Mountain House, etc., those are amazing foods for diversity, right? And to get away from that food fatigue. But you have to read the fine print on these buckets because chances are they are shortchanging you. Mistake number nine underestimating the three skills communication, navigation, and medical really underestimating any skills, but specifically calling out these because I know a lot of people, it's just not fun. It's not interesting. There's so many 
more fun topics and more interesting and engaging YouTube videos, for example, than learning how to stop somebody from bleeding out or learning how to get from point A to point B using a map and compass. I get it. But without communication skills and equipment, you won't be able to communicate with people in the outside world and get information on what might be going on around you. Learning how to use a ham radio, for example, you know, that can go a long way. Navigation, not being able to know how to go from point A to point B without a compass and a map, or just not being able to read a map and compass. You know, not being able to get from point A to point B is going to be a serious, serious downfall and gap in your skills and knowledge. And then medical, right? If you can't treat small cuts and scrapes, etc., broken bones, there's not going to be doctors in certain situations. Now, I'm not talking end of the world scenario. What if hospitals were overrun? What if hospitals, it was a power outage and the generators went out and everybody went home because they want to take care of their own family in an extended power outage event? Whatever the reason, you should have basic understanding of how to stop a bleed and CPR. Those two can go a long way to saving somebody's life starting the day that you learn it. So don't procrastinate on learning those three skill sets. Mistake number 10, keeping all of your gear and supplies and equipment in one location. I think one of the best things you can do is being able to stage equipment, gear, um, redundancy, you know, if anything, food, water, etc., at a secondary location, just in case, whether it's caches or, uh, you know, a friend's house, etc., you need to be able to have things in case there was a fire in your home or your home was looted, you weren't able to get home for whatever reason. It's very wise to have things maybe on a way to a bug out location such as a cache where you would be able to pick up supplies on your way to somewhere or if you lost everything in a fire, you would have at least something, you wouldn't be left with nothing. Mistake number 11, lone wolfing it. So you're putting on that backpack, it's 60 plus pounds, you're heading into the woods and you're just gonna bushcraft your way. Have you ever tried living in the wilderness for an extended period of time? I'm not talking camping either. Have you lived in a situation where it's the middle of winter and your gear and supplies, you can't even use them because you are so cold, right? And you can't just hop in the car and warm it up for 15 minutes. People are gonna severely overestimate their abilities and their skills in a situation like this. And that is one of the worst things you can do is just take to the road. Is depending on the situation, there's going to be a lot of danger with making that choice. Mistake number 12, guns, guns, guns. All you get is guns and ammo. You know, you're only focused on this kind of security and you know, I'm gonna learn how to shoot. I'm gonna learn how to, you know, hurt people, you know, so they can't hurt me first. I'm going to keep those marauders and looters at bay. The chances of you surviving a gunfight are very slim. You know, it, all it takes is one lucky round to incapacitate you or take you out of the fight for good. You know, it, there's just so many things that go into a gunfight. My bet is most folks wouldn't get through their first reload. Even if you're a hardened member of the military, right? You've been doing this for decades, all of your life. I don't care. There's power in numbers. You could be overpowered, outmanned, outgunned. You know, there's just nothing comes from only storing guns and ammo and focusing on this, I'm going to fight my way out of it mentality. There is so many other topics and preparedness that you're missing out on if that's all you're focused on. And mistake number 13, waiting to get fit, right? Procrastination when it comes to getting fit, um, cardio, functional workouts, etc. are going to be the best. Your mental and physical capabilities and through exercise, right, through meditation, through actual working out and exercise, through running or using the cardio bike, you know, these things are going to give you such an advantage in a situation and you're going to be healthier, right? It's good for your health. It's good for your heart. It's good for your mind. It's good for balance. So mistake number 13, I think is a very dangerous one to make. And I get it. There's, there's kids, there's families, there's events, there's situations and, and things that pop up in daily life. I get it. I'm living life too. But you have to find time to be physically and mentally fit. All right, folks, those were the top 13 mistakes that I think from the top of my head, you know, people are making. I made those mistakes too. I learned from those mistakes. You may not think they're mistakes thrown in the comments, as I said earlier, but let me know if you think I missed anything. 
Let me know through the thumbs up, comments, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe um, if you want to see more content like this. So thanks for watching, folks. I'll catch you next time.